In some of the earlier lectures, we discussed the problems associated with convergence in neural networks and the importance of initialization in ensuring good convergence behavior. One of the methods that has recently been proposed for good convergence behavior of neural networks is that of unsupervised pre-training. However, the utility of unsupervised pre-training goes beyond ensuring good convergence behavior of the learning. Unsupervised pre-training also acts as a regularizer for the neural network. In this video, we will discuss the details of unsupervised pre-training and its usefulness as a regularization method. In a previous lecture, on uh, training deep neural networks, we had discussed the importance of initialization in the convergence behavior of the neural network. It was discussed that bad initializations can lead to unstable convergence for the neural network. The typical approach is to initialize to a Gaussian with variance 1 by R, where R is the in degree of the neuron. Here we are, in, uh, we are talking about initializing the weight of a specific neuron. So the weight is initialized in a way that is sensitive to the in degree of the neuron because this is useful for controlling the variance uh, which comes out of the neuron, which is also in turn helpful for handling the vanishing and exploding gradient problems. Some other uh, forms of initialization such as Xavier initialization are more sophisticated in that they use both the in degree and out degree of, of the neuron while setting its weights. Pre-training goes beyond these simple initializations by using the training data. As we will see in this lecture, uh, pre-training not only helps in terms of convergence behavior of the neural network, but it also has a regularization effect. So there are two types of pre-training that are commonly used. One is uh, unsupervised pre-training. In unsupervised pre-training, you use training data without labels for initialization. So one, ad one advantage of unsupervised pre-training is that because you don't need the labels, often you, if you have a lot of unlabeled data available, you can use it for unsupervised pre-training, uh, even if you cannot use it for the final phase of supervised training. Now, uh, unsupervised pre-training has two effects. One is that it improves the convergence behavior once you initialize the network in this way. The second is that it also has a regularization effect. That means that the, uh, gen uh, the, the final trained model, it generalizes better to out-of-sample data. The second form of pre-training is supervised pre-training. Supervised pre-training uses the training data with labels for initialization. This uh, type of approach, it improves the convergence behavior, but it might still overfit to the training data. Both forms of pre-training have been discussed uh, in the book. However, here we will discuss only the case of unsupervised pre-training because we are focusing on the regularization effect. Now, uh, unsupervised pre-training can uh, be used both for unsupervised applications and for supervised applications. Here, we have shown two neural architectures. Uh, one is an autoencoder on the left. The other is a classification application. Now, uh, in this case, I have chosen the architecture in such a way such that the number of nodes in the input layer in both cases is the same. The number of uh, nodes in the first two hidden layers are the same. Uh, the main difference is that after that point, after the most constricted layer in the autoencoder, the architecture changes. However, what we will show is that both of these two neural ar uh, architectures, they use almost the same pre-training procedure. In the case of the autoencoder, which is an unsupervised application, the pre-training will only help you in terms of improving convergence behavior. Mostly it will help you in terms of convergence behavior. Whereas in the case of supervised application, the one on the right, uh, it will help you both uh, in terms of the convergence behavior as well as in terms of regulation. But what we'll do is that we will discuss the autoencoder architecture first. So first we'll focus uh, on a case where a base application is to perform dimension reduction and we want to uh, pre-train this autoencoder in order to give you good, good convergence behavior. So, and, and then we'll discuss how the supervised application, the, the architecture on the right, is a minor variation of the procedure that we use for pre-training the autoencoder. So, let's say we want to pre-train this autoencoder on the left. Uh, how do we use a greedy layer-wise approach? 
the way it's done is that we use two applications we, we create two single layer auto encoders so here i have shown uh, first focus on the first level reduction on the left you can see the inputs are the five inputs so imagine your five dimensional data it's x1 through x5 are the inputs and the output layer contains x1 prime through x5 prime okay now uh, what's going to happen is that in this case you will learn the first layer of the first level reduction which is y1 through y3 so uh, now this is a single layer auto encoder so it's easy to train because in a single layer you won't have the same kind of convergence issues that you will face in a deep network so you are going to use the first level pretraining is that for each training point you are going to learn its reduced representation y1 through y3 as well as the weights so you are going to learn these uh, outer set of weights now these outer set of weights is what you will inherit in the initialization for the outer set of weights uh, the the weights uh, associated with the input layer and the output layer the ones immediately incident to the input layer and the output layer are are, are what you will initialize them to is what you learned from this pretraining pre procedure then for the second level now note that these activations these y1 through y3 the one that you learn in the first level reduction on the left you will use them in order to train the second level reduction so here if you look at the figure on the right now you use y1 through y3 and again the outputs you try to make the y1 through y3 and you you can use squared loss to ensure that so you now you learn the second level reduction z1 through z2 and more importantly you will learn the weights which are incident on uh, these layers so 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 this way you will learn the inner weights so these inner weights uh, are what this auto encoder will inherit from uh, uh, fr 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 from what you learned over here so so now now that you initialize the weights uh, in this way uh, then you are going to perform a uh, a, a final phase of fine tuning so so what you are going to do is that you are going to go back to this auto encoder you have initialized the weights in this way so the using the greedy layer wise procedure you initialize the outer weights you initialize the inner weights and, and then you perform a final phase of fine tuning where you take the training data and and, and you try to and, and you can use squared loss or any other loss function you use for an auto encoder in order to learn the weights appropriately so so that is how you get a pre-trained auto encoder without facing the convergence issues now for a supervised learner the approach is very similar except that your fine tuning phase uh, is different so how how do we pre-train a supervised uh, learner so for, so let's say that you have a supervised learner with k hidden layer let's say we have two hidden layers because uh, in our example before we had uh, two hidden layers for a supervised learner so let's say we have k is equal to so what we are going to do we are going to remove the output layer and we are going to create an auto encoder with 2k minus 1 hidden layers so uh, so let's refer to this so here you have two hidden layers so we are going to remove the output layer we are going to remove the output uh, node and we are going to create an auto encoder with three hidden layers so that's exactly the auto encoder on the left okay so for the supervised learner on the right we create the auto encoder and learn uh, on the left and then you perform exactly this pre training procedure I pretend that you were pre training the auto encoder okay so 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 you perform exactly this pre training uh, procedure it's unsupervised pre training you're not using the labels in any way and then uh, what you do is that the weights in the encoder portion you are going to keep only the weights in the encoder portion so so whatever weights you learned so here you you learned uh, fr from the slide on uh, for case a you learned the outer weights the ones on the left and then for for the case b you learned the inner weights the one on the encoder portion these two sets of weights what you'll do you'll initialize them into the supervised learner so so you're going to initialize the weights incident on the input layer and you're you're going to initialize the weights between the two uh, hidden layers uh, the only weights you don't know are the ones in the output layer so how how do we learn these weights so again we are what we are going to do is that uh, we can pretrain you can fix the the the, uh, the weights that you just learned and you can first pretrain only the output layer using these uh, reductions you, 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 using the second level reductions 
and then once you have learned all the weights you can fine tune all layers so what you can do is that you can run your training data so this is uh uh, you, you can run your training data through the entire network with inputs, uh, with, with the input features as well as the class labels, and you will be doing regular back propagation. Except that you start now, you started with a nicely set of initialized weights. So, uh, so, so, so for unsupervised pre-training, of course, other methods may be used. So historically, the first uh, pre-trained techniques, uh, they use restricted Boltzmann machines. In fact, uh, one of the important contributions of restricted Boltzmann machine to the neural network literature has been the idea of pre-training, which was eventually generalized to autoencoders. Restricted pre uh, Boltzmann machine aren't used as commonly in neural network learning anymore, but the idea of pre-training has persisted. The second point is that here we showed a case where we pretrain layer by layer. This is that's why it's called BD layer wise pretraining. So, for example, in A, you first learn the outermost weights, which you use for uh, pretraining, and and then you in, in B you learn the inner weights. In reality, you can uh, group multiple layers together for pretraining, and, and in some convolutional neural networks like VGGNet, this has been done. And of course, if you group multiple layers together they are both advantage and disadvantage. The disadvantage is that you might have convergence issue within each component. So there's a trade-off between the ability to perform efficient component-wise component learning and the global quality, how, well, how good your global initialization is. Now, uh, the question is why does pre-training work? So one point is that even though you're doing supervised learning, uh, what pretending does is that it already brings the activation of neural network to the manifold of the data distribution. So the features uh, in the final, they, all, they already correspond to the repeated pattern in the data. And the final phase of fine tuning, all it does is that it learns to combine and modify the relevant features that you learned in an unsupervised way uh, for inference. And and, and pretending in this way, it initializes the problem closer to the basin of the global optimum. Because you are, because if you start with random weights, you are actually very far off, not only from the optimum value, but you, but you are very far off even from the manifold of the data distribution. So, so pretending in this way, it, it brings you a point where you're much closer to the basin of the global optima. And uh, this point actually is summarized by Hinton is that if you want to recognize shapes, you must first learn to generate images. So uh, the idea is that learning how to generate shapes is the first step in learning how to recognize them.